bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear we can sit together. It's so beautiful. Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, the Heart of the Artist talk and this is Monica Ramirez, Warrior of Love and today we have a very special friend and colleagues that I actually respect a lot. His name is ben Benjamin Varela and uh, let me re uh, tell you a little bit who he is. Benjamin Varela was born in 1955 in Brooklyn. He's a Puerto Rican artist and he has exhibited in Texas, Wisconsin, Illinois, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Spain, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, uh, Italy. Benjamin has shown in the Bronx Museum in New York, uh, Byron Roche Gallery in Mexican Printing Workshops in Chicago, in, Colo uh, in Coronado Studios in Austin. In addition to his work in his public collections, including the Guadalupe Cultural Guadalupe Cultural Art Center, the Romero Collection Mexican uh, American Art Prints in UT Austin, in the Museum of South Texas in Corpus Christi, and Bronx Museum in New York. He has in San Antonio Tejano uh, Conjunto Festival poster winner and received public uh, commission for the city of Harlingen, Texas. He has exhibited in the theme show um, Title Nahual Bestial in El Paso Museum in Fine Arts El Paso, Texas, and in La Casa, Michigan, a group show in Chicago, Illinois. You can find uh, his information in the description box. Then it's really my pleasure to have you here, my friend. And I, I know you've been very, very busy lately because you're painting a mural, right? Yes, at the moment I. I am painting a mural. We're in Texas, guys, so Texas gets very hot in summer. Oh, yeah, you get used to that. Wearing a, what do you call it, a heavy shirt so I don't get the sun. The sun is does more damage than the heat. And so, anyway, this is my mural. You can see it's not really that big. I mean, it is, it is bigger than one could imagine uh, standing next to it. And what is, what is the name of the, of, of the mural that you're doing, Ben? The mural is basically a memorial. Uh -huh. That's what I think it is, because it's about the fallen heroes of Elsa. Okay. It's a big And so... They asked me to put the signias for each military um, representation of uh, Navy, Army, Marine, and Air Force. And so these uh, paintings that we see over here, the insignias, like this one over here is Army. Uh, my wife did that, and she's the part of uh, all the the which frames the work um, landscapes and ocean just to clarify uh, to viewers, as well just to clarify to the viewers anna uh, his wife anna varela she is a very good artist she is also she have a, a mfa too in art and uh, and they work together in many projects that's why he was mentioning it uh, well, you can see here some of the details of her work on here. And uh, she was the one who got the project. She's uh, sick. Uh, so I had to almost take over the project myself. But um, it's really her project, her mural uh, project on here and I'm just sort of like 
happy enough to paint all these portraits because that's what I do best. Yes. And you see the dots in the mural, guys. Uh, ben is very known uh, in the puntualism in his artwork. And that is like his signature artwork, correct, Ben? Well, what I do, I don't use color to define face. And that's one of the things I don't do. What I do is uh, I stipple but I use different types of stippling marks. And there's a definition, you know, there's hard edge, soft edge, nebulous, and all that types of stippling marks. Otherwise, I'll paint it directly on the, the wall to get the visual effect. Now, if here I'm... Over here, that's part of the flag. And so I'm trying to give a, a sensation that it's from in honor of the soldiers, the fallen soldiers, fallen Marines and the fallen, uh, uh, what you call Air Force hmm. uh, and Navy. And I have some questions for you well, that I would like to ask you. Can you uh -huh. I have some questions for you that I would like to ask you. Can you hear me well? Okay. Okay. I wanted to ask. Okay. I wanted to ask you when. Uh, when did you decided to become an artist? When you were a little boy, or when it was that love to become? Well, my both parents worked, and so basically, I was left in the basement. <laughs> Maybe I'm guessing my age, between four and five and six year old. And uh, when they came back, my mother worked part time. And so she would come back around one o'clock. I, I was always in the basement. In the basement, I, the only thing I had to do was make things or draw. And so those are the things that I would have. A basement in somewhere, what do they call that place? Mount St. Pelotas in New York. Hmm. So that's how I got started drawing and all this. It became second nature. What is yes, I had to learn how to shade and do all this stuff, but I knew how to draw. And I could draw things intuitively back then. And not knowing uh, what I was doing. Yeah. That's how we all started. Okay. Hey, Ben. I got the man coming in. He's going to take my, uh, my um, what do you call it? Uh, the, the lifter here, which is a contraption that you see that I use to come and paint over. Yeah. That's it. Paint stuff. and all the stuff that I, I I have here. I have done the, the scaffold, but in the old fashioned way. <laughs> that Salis <Salisa> is mechanical. <laughs> ben, I wanted to ask you, and what inspired you to, to paint? Uh, what is your inspiration when you paint? What do you like more painting? What is my inspiration to paint? Yes. Well, I usually learn on my own, but basically they were enhanced by each individual perspective of, of a professor. I mean, it depends on who I was with. No, but what I'm meaning, uh, when, when you're creating a, a piece, uh, uh -huh. a white canvas what is going to be your your inspiration to start painting in the white canvas you have free range it is not a commission work it's well, an art piece of it if it's a white canvas I end up painting it black and uh, it is something that that I can see better and I use my imagination okay and what inspired you? What do you paint usually? 
well. It's a cultural thing in the beginning, and then I just basically did what I wanted to do. Uh, if I had to do something for, for, uh, uh, let me see, then a theme, to... Mexican theme, I would do a Mexican theme, Day to Dead. Uh, uh, that's a cultural theme. Do you have any influence what in, I, what artists influence you more in your artwork? What influenced my artwork? Yes, what artists have, have influenced in your artwork? I had Chuck Close because I seen a lot of his artwork when I was in Madison, Wisconsin. And painting in black and white or painting uh, a neutral color. There's been several artists, but I uh, chuckled when I, I was inspired by in literature. I'm sorry. And that's the things that I do. And, uh, he's been one of the, the you know, he just passed away, I believe, a couple of days ago. I'm sorry, what's his name? I think he was a uh close past today, just a couple of days ago okay. i think uh that was chuck close he's one of the pretty he does portraits nine feet tall uh sometimes he would stipple them or airbrush them with dot patterns and pull them up and that's that's why some of the things i got interested in and uh, learn how to use it uh, the medium of airbrushing here. I when I when I was in Wisconsin, I just took airbrushing there, and so when I came over he, here, I used it for Santa Barasa, uh, uh Pablo Mural in in uh, I don't know if it's in Austin. University of uh, San Antonio. University of San Antonio, yes. Okay. Oh. And uh, that's what I, what I did. Um, they, and so airbrushing, other techniques, you can see that I just don't like really just painting the, the traditional way. Overlaying transparency, transparencies and all that. I'm not really satisfied with those effects. Everybody using them. So when I do use it, I use it kind of the way how I approach it. And so if you step back, it really comes, it really unifies itself. You see the background of the sky? Well, I didn't patch on top of it, what I did is I dry brushed it on there. And that's uh, a very, uh, uh, you have to, you know, wipe the brush to the point where it's almost dry and then you apply it on the surface to get that effect. Yes. And that's what I did, that background. And actually, when you look at it at a distance, it looks like a natural sky in the background, the clouds and the stars are moving forward. That's the visual effect. What is your favorite technique to use? Not only murals, I'm talking about your all your artwork. My favorite technique? Yes. Well, it it all depends where I was because when I was in in uh where was that play? Um, Oak Park. I, I did, I saw people doing uh, monoprints. Hey Ben, um, I wanted to ask you because many of the spectators that are going to be seeing this video are artists that are just starting and I know you were a professor of uh, different universities. And uh, yeah. What is the advice that you will give to a person that is just starting their art career 
and uh, to choose a gallery because I know you've been exhibiting everywhere and your artwork is actually very known and uh, and what advice you would give to uh, an artist that is just starting how to choose a gallery how do I choose a gallery basically the gallery sees my work I mean when I was in Chicago I did exhibit but I was part of a printmaking uh print work or the Mexican workshop. Oh. Yes. As an artist, we invited to many art exhibits. So, what is the art? Uh, what are the places that you will advise to the artists that they are just starting their career, art career, and uh, where to exhibit? Uh, you're in mute. Just to let you know, you're in mute. Okay, as an artist. We get invited to many, many, many galleries and many art exhibits, but we have to choose from uh, what art exhibit we want to participate or what gallery. So, what advice you would oh. give an artist that is just starting their career? Well, for me, I started when I was in Oak Park. Uh, in Illinois, and basically I either joined a art league, the Oak Park Art League, there on was a print shop called uh, Fresh Graphics in Oak Park, and they were first located in. Chicago Avenue, but they since moved from there. And uh, I exhibit there. And there was a person by the name of Nicolas de Jesus. And he just sort of like looked at my artwork because it was printmaking. And what was it? He, he liked my linoleum, uh, but I did also monotypes as well and maybe a couple of other forms of printmaking mediums. But uh, what he was wanting me to do was to join their group in Chicago uh, that was on Hosted Street in Chicago. And it was the Mexican Printmaker Workshop. And uh, that exhibited works. And not only from there, I had people who came in uh, to that gallery and they were interested in other people's work as well as mine. And I got to exhibit in, let's say, for instance, the Byron Roach Gallery in Chicago. There's been two other galleries that I would exhibit there. But people come and they ask you to exhibit. It's not like you go and write a letter and throw a purport a proposal uh, well, actually they, you, they you, actually you, search yeah. for you yes but uh, but we send also proposals yes you, you have, yeah. have yeah everybody makes you think that it's proposals and all of this but uh a lot of galleries let's say they look for people to exhibit in their gallery they don't just simply wait for somebody to give them a proposal and exhibit mm -hmm. yeah they'll do the exhibit but mostly when there are people like, like me, I don't write proposals. I don't ask for any uh, to open exhibits because that doesn't work. What works is that they come and see your work and then they ask to uh, So you would recommend to an artist that is just starting to, to participate in all the art exhibits they're invited? Not here, not in uh, what you call Allen, not in 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 uh, in Edinburgh, not in in uh, Arlington. Ben, because there's people they're not going to come in to to ben. come and exhibit. Ben, a lot of only, it's fine. I would you if they ask me, that's what I do. Okay. If galleries 
make here's here's the thing if galleries go out and only exhibit people who petition or send in their recommendation to work i just go into galleries and, do that, and they get more work <laughs> so basically you can't to participate in all the art exhibits that they've been invited correct that's right they should participate in it but that's the way how it works on there at least it works for me that way i get to know artists it's a combination of getting to know artists a combination of uh exhibiting and works there's very few times where i set in a emissions to to places to exhibit whether it got accepted or not those type of things and uh i always get disappointed on doing stuff like that and so what i usually do is just exhibit on the basis of who comes asking or calls me or something like that and i've always done it that way i know everybody's in different worlds over here I can exist that way in New York City. There's a big market on, on there. He's not going to let let things go because he's you're not going to write a gracious uh, uh, proposal to exhibit your work and to give a, a speech on it. A lot of people uh, not really interested in in knowing. <laughs> the funny part is they're only interested in what you call seeing if your work works well in their in their yeah. living rooms. That's, yeah. So that's a joke that goes in Chicago. <laughs> if you, if you do that. I know some of you, I know some colleges come over and they, they give you this big old fist face up about uh, having a theme, lecturing and all that. When I run circles around them, and I, you know, you can get somebody from the Art Institute professor who's selling their work for five hundred dollars, and here's me selling my work for five hundred dollars in a in a local in a local uh, theater uh, gallery. Yes. So I do sell my work. It is hard to survive as an artist in these times. Survival as an artist is time. Well, I would have been dead if I couldn't survive. That's it, especially in Chicago. So, okay, can you see me now? Yes, I can. I like I see my picture of that big old white beard or something. I don't know how that beard got big. Uh, I said I was going to go hair as soon as this mural gets finished. <laughs> How was the, the pandemic for, for you guys work? Because it was very hard for the majority of all the artists. And since 2020, it was very hard on all of us. So how, how was for you guys? For, um, uh, his wife is also an artist. In 2020? Yes, in the pandemic. Oh, well, not really that. that we got this project around uh, January. But a lot of, I guess because of the pandemic, it makes it hard for artists to, to even exhibit in the first place. They just hang their work. Nobody shows up, maybe two or three people. And I can't blame it because the pandemic is really serious stuff for elderly and for maybe young children. I agree. Did you hear me? Yes, I did. That's why last, last year was a, a, a bad year for a lot of artists on here. But it wasn't so bad for us because we had the project here. I mean, it couldn't like we wouldn't be able to sell anything or move anything because there's no there's maybe a couple of exhibits. I I, I remember doing uh, an exhibit over at the uh, oh god, what was that place called? I even forgot the that museum over here at the Harlingen Museum. I participated. At the Harlingen Museum. I oh, the Harlingen, yes. Yes. Yes, that's, that's the one uh, Anna and I, we worked on, on that one on yes. there. I know you exhibited in there. Yes. And uh, 
and several other people from different uh, phases of life in here in uh, Arlington also in Edinburgh and, and even Corpus Christi. I had people from Corpus Christi exhibiting there too. But that's, we, you know, nothing was sold over there and basically, uh, yeah, we had that uh, pandemic. I couldn't, I could not uh, have a crowd of people coming inside there and, and to look at the work. I, we could only leave it open so one or two or three people would show up. Um, and no. so, yeah, I, I blame it on the pandemic. It's just the way how it is. It is hard for, for you uh, it, it, to actually go more into social media, more into the internet to sell your artwork, or it has to be in person for you. And and Anna, do you sell a lot to internet or only well, or only in person? In, the interview in person. I'm a bad interviewer, <laughs> but I, it's because I, it, it's because I, the way I think, it's sort of like when I look at the work and I put things there, I add other things to it and uh, it, it makes it hard to follow me at times. And so, yeah, doing artwork on there I, and techniques and all that. There's one thing I, I usually try to be is different from everybody. And that's why I stipple. When you see out here, I try to be different from majority of artists. And I always stipple on, on the work. But on this occasion, yes, I, I'm doing things that you would normally see somebody who does blending techniques, like in oils because uh, I do have experience in doing what is called airbrushing, but there's certain techniques I can do with a round head brush that mix that airbrushing technique. Like what I did with George Washington, that big portrait. Are you still teaching? I guess people can't University? seem to think I can't do are, are you still teaching in any university then? Because Ben used to be a teacher in several universities, and I used to teach. I used to working as a professor. What do you mean? I used to working as a professor. No, I'm retired. I'm retired. Retired bum. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. And retired. you what you like? I'm I'm doing what I want to do, and I'm retired. And I could do picking I want to do, but I'm focusing on this, uh, this uh, mural because not only that I have to do a portrait, I'm doing two more portraits up there, which I have two more left to do. And uh, they have to look like the people who I'm, I'm doing it on there. And that's not easy to do. I mean, uh, they have to look like painting. Otherwise, people will come over and they say, which one is it? <laughs> you know? Yes. Sir. And there's uh, most of the range. Of, you know, I, I, I got them. I got them. Yeah. And so you can see, I got them as they uh, were photographed last time. And sometimes I'll try to make them smile if I can. <laughs> Them look depressed because a lot of them look yeah they look very depressed they're going to fight a war i mean this is back in 1968 at the height of the vietnam uh, vietnam theater in in asia a subject as for painting and all that stuff uh i wanted to ask what you, was it i wanted to ask you uh changing a little bit the subject and um do you consider that right now, in this time, in 2021, it is the women artists are the same appreciated as a male artist in this time? And you're referring to my artwork or? No, I'm talking about the culture in the world. 
is the woman uh, woman artists are appreciated the same as a male artist a lot of a lot of uh, uh depending on their skills if they got social skills they will succeed in in doing it if, if they with minimal art skills you can you can actually succeed i know that for sure because i've seen it in chicago i mean here you have to struggle a little bit but yes you would succeed you don't think so I believe there Hello? is there is a can you can you hear me? I believe there is in the history of the of the art the women are the ones that are always being in the back, and the men are the ones that are always being in the front, and those are the ones like look the the case of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. Diego uh -huh. Rivera, a very famous one, and Frida Kahlo was got to known after she was dead, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was kind of known, but not like now. Now Frida is a big, uh -huh. but she's dead. She didn't leave that and, uh, when she was being an artist. And like that, you can see it in the history of the art world that it's been harder for a woman to actually succeed as an artist than a male. That's why I ask you that question. If you see a difference now in the 2021. 21st, like they're following the same suit. Uh, right now at my level, I'm here in, in Elsa. I can only tell you that there have been women artists that were best, all they're successful like uh, like Frida. But when I was with Santa Barraza, she was sharing sharing a project with another uh, woman, uh, and so they were doing the fountain and Barasa was painting the ceiling of the rotunda in, in San Antonio, University of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're successful at, at the point on there. Barasa was a successful artist. And that's, um, you have um, um, Carlo Garza, Oh no, they are. They, they are okay. successful women artists. They are. I'm not denying them that they are. They are not. They, of course, they are. But uh, do you think it's there's, the same? There's uh, others. But I know there. There are many, many, many. Uh, I'm, I'm, as if we put examples, we're not never gonna finish putting examples. But what I'm saying, is, do you think it is harder for a woman than a man, or is or is than a man? Yes. I, I, would, I would say that basically if they produce artwork, exhibit it, uh, talk about their works, uh, have a, an, an idea what direction of their work is going to, going through, uh, their chances of success will, will, will be there. Uh, you can't, you know, do it in, in Elsa because there is not a, a big art community here yes I agree. Uh, the only com uh there's there's not <laughs> and if you do it in 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 harlingen and in in uh in uh edinburgh and uh mcallen yes there's a community of art but that's just you know part of the 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 art festivals that they have all, all the time on there that's one and then the whatever the university does to exhibit uh utpa or ut uh rgb rgb uh what what projects do you i still got what other projects do you have coming then beside of this mural well i wanted to just to do linoleum print that's what I, I did on my own for many, uh, many years, even in high um, school. One of my first prints were done in high school. And uh, I don't have those anymore, but I do have the one I did in, in Oak Park and in Madison, Wisconsin. 
just to the spectators, uh, Betty and, uh, Perry known as a printmaker. And uh, just so you guys know. But, you know, to tell you the truth, when I did linoleum, nobody respected it as a medium. I kind of remember that because uh, I would enter my, my works and, and competitions, I never win anything. And, uh, or I never get into exhibits until later on when I was in uh, uh, Chicago that I got into a, a exhibit and uh, had my, uh, my work published in a book of poetry. So I, it wasn't all downhill for linoleum. It's just that it was a challenge for me to do linoleum. I always like challenging myself, just like this mirror over here. Yeah, in summer, it is very challenging, I bet. In, summer, in Texas, in South Texas, like, ooh, I bet it was challenging. And it's big. Well, that's just it. It, it is huge. And uh, I never had that in mind when I was doing it. That wasn't the important thing. The important thing for me is just to get the portraits to look like the fellows that they are represent. And uh, yeah, one or two of them I have to do over again, but I know I, uh, on uh, most of them, the, the parents recognize their, their, um, their son. The, the family rep, rep, recognize their, their either older, younger or older brother who, who passed away. Um, hey Ben, and, if someone would like to contact you and see your artwork, where they can go and look at your artwork? Well, I haven't been exhibiting any anywhere. No, but in a, you have a web page or you have a page or something where the people can go and see your artwork because it's amazing. Yeah. You can go on my Facebook and see some works that I do put up there. Or password. I know Facebook has been uh, what you call rid of all the the photograph works there and moving it in into some uh, into another uh, Instagram. And I think it has something to do with that they protect it from being copied. I, I always thought that if somebody's going to copy my work, he's going to have to do a lot of work to do it. <laughs> I'm going to share. I'm going to share your link so like that uh, in the description box, so like other people can go and uh, and see your work. And it is collectibles, guys. I I am one of the collectors too. I I I have a, a painting and uh, and they do also jewelry painted by Ben and uh, and I collect some of the work of Ben too. And do you have something else that you would like to add, Ben? I got something else. What? Would you like? Uh, we're I about, got something. We're about to finish. Would you like to add something else to the conversation? Well, the, I've been uh, painting for since I got to uh, I'm trying to remember in Chicago. But when I first started the stipple, that was when I uh, I started to do printmaking, and I started to, if I painted anything, I did something in black and white first, and then I added it on there. I mean, I tried exhibiting my paintings over in, in Kingsville, but due to the fact that people were stealing my paintings, I, I, I changed my idea about that. <laughs> anyway, because yeah. I had about two paintings uh, taken from me and I got one photograph of it. If somebody recognized it, I would appreciate that they would tell me in, in from Kingsville. I think it was high school kid anyway. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. It is terrible when it happened to us. 
it can pop into me and it doesn't feel nice. But well, well Ben, I really appreciate that you have accepted my invitation uh, to this podcast and uh, and and if anyone uh, would like to see his work, I really recommend it to you. I'm going to put his links so like that uh, anyone can go and, and check your work because it's really worth it to see on it. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to make the announcements for the next week. Tomorrow, uh, we have in Soul Talk, Alaron G is meet. And he is um, a QHHT, a past lives inotherapist, energy healer, and a spiritual coach. And the next Sunday, we have in the heart of the artist talk, uh, a surprise for you guys. And right now, I'm having uh, some openings for coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And just send me a, a private message, and I will give you more information regarding that. And remember, guys, the channel survive from your donations. So we appreciate any help that you can give. Thank you so much. And this is the heart of the artist talk. And my name is Monica Ramirez, Warrior of Love. Thank you. I'm just sitting here I got time